All right, since I am driving in the country and I'm in a place right now and there's no signal, I know that it's coming. I haven't been home to see it yet, but I know it's coming. And I know that people are going to be asking me, Pastor Dow, please explain affirmative action. So I'm going to go ahead and make an attempt. I still don't think anybody from Supreme Court all the way down in the United States of America really truly understands it, to tell you the truth. But I'm going to give you my skinny on it, my take on it, okay, in order to try to help bring some clarity and understanding about affirmative action. Uh, first of all, affirmative action has to do with di discrimination. It has to do with equality. It has to do that uh, some people are privileged, some people are not privileged. All right? Now, I'm going to give you the elementary part of affirmative action so you'll be able to at least get an understanding when you hear people using these words. All right? Because if you have, let me give, give an example of Ivy League schools. All right? You got Yale, Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, you know, Vanderbilt, stuff like that. All right? Duke. These are Ivy League schools, okay? When you get these Ivy League schools and stuff, uh, it's obvious uh, that people of a hue, black hue like me, um, they didn't have the chance to actually even attend any of these universities whatsoever at all because they were mostly white universities. And of course, what happened was is when they started getting into affirmative action in the late 60s, early 70s, the government got involved and said, all right, for out of every hundred students that is actually in the classroom and i mind you, i'm just using roundabout figures okay at least 16 of them need to be some minority i don't be able to believe it that's so a hispanic japanese chinese black or whatever it is you need to have a minority okay in other words even though they made this um prerequisite the, the people that get into these schools the standards for testing still had to be the same and of course um a lot of people took this particular uh, law to task because um, what if one of those uh, minorities that went to one of these Ivy League schools uh, tested and they scored lower on their tests uh, than their white counterparts? Uh, then that would, would that not be discrimination as well? So affirmative action had worked discrimination both ways. It worked against, um, it actually worked against um, the minorities from the very, very beginning. And of course, this is where people start getting into, you know, the Head Start rule. And I let me give you an example of Head Start rule. You know, if you already grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth, or if you already grew up, quote unquote, privileged, okay, you already had a head start on the minorities who came over here as indentured slaves, or they are the indigenous people of this land, and they were slaves. Uh, because remember, slaves didn't have a right to read, right? Uh, much less even know how to spell their name. And if you got caught, it could have been a death penalty for you. And so when you got somebody that has a head start concerning education, concerning privilege, livelihood, you start going all the way down the line, we, you be, we begin to see exactly how things start to work. We begin to see that everybody didn't have an equal footing starting off at the same place at the starting line, such as in a 100-yard dash. If you use a 100-yard dash as an analogy, that means the white people in this country pretty much started at the 50-yard line, and we're just now getting started. And there's no way, I don't care who you are, there's no way that you're going to turn around and actually say that there's equality when you started at the 50 and been at the 50, and I'm just now getting to the starting line, and you're going to tell me that there's equality, hence IE4 comes affirmative action. All right? And so... Either way it goes, I don't think that there's ever going to be uh, any solid law concerning, concerning affirmative action. Most politicians use it in campaigns, um, and, and most people sit there and act like that they know what the hell that they're talking about. I'm talking about the people in the crowd when they don't even have a clue what it's all about. But it should be equality all the way across the board. A fair education um, based on fair testing based on everybody being able to attend schools and get the same education. And uh, of course, that's what we did not have in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, other countries are literally taking America on the chin. Uh, as a matter of fact, the EU just the other day said it to America again, you owe the black people in your country reparations. And of course, then that starts another can of worms because everybody else, including the Japanese uh, from Pearl Harbor, they got reparations and, and everybody else, but the blacks in this country 
has never received reparations, and I got something to tell you too. You ain't gonna never get your 40 acres and a mule if you're waiting on this system right here uh, to actually uh, do what is just, true, and right. It's just simply not built that way. So you might as well just get ready to carve out uh, a livelihood for yourself and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps because you can forget it. Your government only takes, it doesn't give anything. I promise you that. And so quit belly aching and crying, quit following all these leaders that set up at keep griping and murmuring, complaining about what you owe us and let's tally all this stuff up because it ain't gonna happen. You gotta wait till the most high come and set the record straight and set it right. And that's just the truth. But anyway, I don't want to make this a long outdrawn video of affirmative action, but I think that pretty I think that many of you pretty much get the skinny uh, of what I'm talking about, uh, trying to explain affirmative action on an elementary level. That's what I call an elementary level. Hey, no matter what level you're on, if you heard this, you pretty much understand what affirmative action is now. So now you're not left out in the dark whenever politicians, lawmakers, educators, or whoever it may be get out here and start talking and sounding like they're educating stuff down even us can even understand and I mean even us I'm including myself in that too because I'm just a, a regular old guy that's all there is to it um, now we all can understand exactly what's being said what's being touted and you all also have uh, the ear and the discernment to be able to see what angle that they're trying to pull things from as well so I hope I said something to stimulate thought Hope I was able to help you out in your little small form of education right here because I believe the best education is not in the institutions where they tell you what books to read. But I believe the best education is, is when you find something that really interests you and you're passionate about and then you start receiving that information, you apply, you apply the knowledge that you have just got finished learning to see if it works. And then that in itself proves what real true education is because it will always benefit you some way, somehow, not only now, but in the long term. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. This road is bumpy.